Hi, this is John from Jet Set Citizen, and today I'm interviewing Steve Cam from Nerd Fitness. Please, um, take a moment to introduce yourself. Tell people who you are. Absolutely. My name is Steve Cam, and I am a giant nerd. Uh, about four years ago, I started a website called nerdfitness.com, and it is a niche fitness site dedicated specifically to helping nerds and desk jockeys that are brand new to fitness get healthy. Uh, like I said, I started about four years ago. Uh, really as a hobby, just kind of something that I thought would be enjoyable and fun for me to do as a, as a side hobby. And after about a year and a half, managed to turn it into a business, and it has been my full-time job for uh, over two and a half years now. The way I found out about you is your exercise around the world video. Please tell us about that. Sure. So after, like I said, I had been, um, I'd been working on the site for about a year and a half, and up until... I had quit my day job. I had never really been outside of North America. Uh, I had traveled throughout the Caribbean and, um, you know, traveled all throughout the United States, but I had never been outside of North America. And I desperately wanted to see the rest of the world. So when I transitioned from a normal job to running Nerd Fitness full time, I kind of freed up my time and location and was able to run the business from anywhere. So I decided to sell all of my stuff. I sold my car, moved out of my apartment, sold all of my personal belongings. I got rid of pretty much everything that couldn't fit into a backpack and decided to go on an epic adventure all over the globe. And I spent two years traveling. I've been to six continents. I've probably flown something like 150,000 miles in those two years. And to kind of chronicle my adventure, uh, I'm a huge fan of Matt Harding who runs the website, Where the Hell is Matt? And his dancing video of him dancing around the world really inspired me and uh, inspired me to put together something similar. So with me running a, a fitness website, I figured what better way to pay homage to Matt than to put together a video of me exercising around the world. So uh, there is a video on YouTube. I think if you just Google or YouTube exercising around the world, it's the first thing that pops up. And how many views does that video have now? Jeez, I want to say it's something like... 180,000 or 190,000, something like that. Uh, it's it, it was kind of funny that when, when I when I first put it out there, um, you know, it, within a couple of days it had really exploded, and I ended up doing radio interviews with with radio stations in Canada and Utah and Seattle. I was on MSN, and I had people calling me, telling me I was on their local news TV stations, and uh, <laughs> kind of funny, you know, I. I I didn't really need the video to do anything in particular. Uh, Nerd Fitness is, is my own business. The video was just kind of something fun that I thought would be an enjoyable way for me to kind of keep track of all my adventures and pack it down into a fun four and a half minute video. So to see it have that kind of success and, and hopefully inspire some other people to get out there and travel um, was a pretty cool feeling. I read a post you did your, all your travels for a $418 around the world trip air to airfare. Yeah, that was. Um, I have. To, I have to give a lot of credit to um, my hero, and I know a hero of yours as well, Chris Gillibo. Uh, he put out a freak a, a book on how to become a frequent flyer master. Geez, at this point, I think he probably put that out about three years ago. And at the time, again, I had, hadn't even started traveling yet. I was still working a regular job, but I knew some point I wanted to start up my own company, make my living online, and start traveling. So, I bought his frequent flyer travel ebook and um, just started racking up frequent flyer miles. I signed up for a couple of credit cards, hit the spending bonuses that I need to on each of them, uh, paid off all of my cards in full each month, so I never carried any credit card debt, and ended up racking up, I think it was something like 100,000 American airline miles and 40,000 Starwood points. And I combined the two to end up booking my trip, which was a 35,000 mile around the world and I could fly, I could make 16 stops on the trip as long as the total trip uh, equal to less than 35,000 miles flown. And the total cost of the trip was 140,000 American airline points and $418 tax. Let's get back to Nerd Fitness, your website here. So can you give us a little bit of a timeline and how you, on the growth of the site when you started and, and the initial traffic and things? So I started in January of, uh, 2000, January of 2009. Uh, I started maybe a couple months before then, but January of 2009 is when I really started putting effort towards it. Uh, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I knew I wanted to start a site about fitness that would help nerds get healthy. So I just started writing articles about fitness. 
Um, I was publishing five articles a week. I spent nine months writing five articles a week while working a full-time job. And I think after nine months, I had something like 85 or 90 subscribers. So I was busting my ass for four or five hours every day. And I think the result of that ended up being like half of a new subscriber for every article that I published, which is awful. And I, I quickly realized after, it's funny saying quickly realized after nine months, uh, Adam Baker, who runs a website called Man Vs. Debt, and he's since become a really good friend and mentor to me. Uh, but he wrote an article called How to Not Suck at Blogging. And I read it, and I couldn't help but think after reading his different checklists of all the things not to do that I kind of sucked at blogging. Um, so I went through, um, I went through uh, each and every one of those things and realized that I was doing a little bit too much. And I wasn't properly following through um, with the nerd fitness concept. You know, I was, I was writing fitness articles, but they weren't very nerdy. And they weren't very personal. And they were very short. And they were articles that I think any generic um, fitness website could, could have to find. So I was going to actually make a name for myself and that super crowded niche of the fitness online or online fitness industry. I had to be different. So I completely changed my writing style. I shifted from five generic articles a week to two really, really detailed, really well-researched, uh, really nerdy, very personal and personable articles on nerd fitness. And I really injected as much nerd and nerd culture and pop culture into my articles as possible to make them more enjoyable for people that would never go to a normal fitness website. And after making that, that adjustment, uh, nerd fitness finally started to grow with a little bit more pace. And I think I went from 90 subscribers to about 300 um, in, I think, a month or two. And since then, it had just been um, fairly regular for about six months. And then I had a guest post over on Art of Manliness. And uh, the first, I think, maybe first or only second guest post I had ever written. And my and from, I think, 700 to 13 or 1,400 and since then, growth has just continued to grow and grow and grow. And now I'm adding somewhere between 200 and 250 email signups every single day. Hey, you're pretty famous for your very long, comprehensive posts. How long does it take you to write a blog, write and research a blog post like that? Geez, that's anywhere from 3 to 10, 15 hours. It, it really depends on the article. Some of them take me a couple of days to write. Some of them I can crank out in an afternoon if they are you know, more of a nerdy, motivational, or inspirational article. But for the, the long, drawn-out articles that, that cover specific topics like, um, you know, my thoughts on CrossFit or my thoughts on body fat percentage or, uh, you know, how to do a specific movement or, or a, a workout or something like that, those workouts can take, can take days to put together. Um, but it's definitely worked out in my favor. Some of those articles, uh, specifically I wrote an article on the paleo diet over two years ago and um, thanks to people that have found the article and linked into it. Uh, now when you search Paleo Diet on Google, my article shows up third after Wikipedia and paleodiet.com. Like, I'm ahead of all the paleo, all of like the authors that have that, you know, coined the term Paleo Diet. My article shows up in front of there somehow. I don't know SEO. I don't know how to game the system. I don't bother with any of that stuff. I just focus on writing really impressive, really helpful, really first enjoyable articles that help people uh, as much as possible and kind of and kind of let everything else work itself out after that and um so far so good nerd fitness is now getting close on we just passed a half unique visits in the past month wow and high rocketing it's amazing so you said it's your full-time income for the last whatever year and a half um how do you make money off the site uh, Ninety-eight percent of my income comes in through the digital products and services that I throw sell through the site. So, I've written three eBooks: the Rebel Fitness, Rebel Strength Guide, and the Rebel Running Guide. Each of which deals with a specific topic in fitness for somebody that is brand new and interested in getting started. So, there are digital um, collections of PDFs that people purchase through the site. It downloads to their computer, and then they read it. They can follow along with the workout plans, watch the video demonstrations follow along with the diet plans and, and recipes and, and things of that nature. And uh, yep, generate, that generates something between 90 and 95% of my income every month. That's amazing. So you're going to keep releasing products like that? Is that the ongoing revenue stream for you? 
be honest with you, I'm I'm kind of shifting my focus now. I'm 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 learning more and more that, you know, when it comes to fitness and and helping people get healthy in the best way possible, ebooks are great for certain people, but they're not great for others. I think they're great for people that are self starters, that have motivation and inspiration, and they're ready to get started. They read an ebook and they just start following it, and six months later, I get an email from them saying they lost a hundred pounds or something crazy. But for the rest of people, they need more. I don't want to necessarily say hand holding, but I mean they need more. Um, they need more instruction, and they need more hands on uh, instruction and, and support along the way. So at the moment, we're currently doing what's called a level up club, and it's a seven week class where people are learning how to have proper habits instead of like a six week crash diet where you lose a bunch of weight, hate yourself, and then put all the weight back on after it's done. This is a this is more of a, a the way I looked at it, it's kind of like a psychological boot camp, helping people kind of readjust their priorities and help them finally start building habits that are going to stick, not just after six weeks, but for twelve weeks and six months and, and a year. Um, so I think that's a big shift. I, mean, I think we're going to shift more into to courses and and help people. Um, instead of just a here download this, good luck to you. I want it to be more of a here, download this. If you have questions and I can support you, we're going to be with you along the way. We're kind of your wingman for the next six to 12 weeks to make sure you actually follow through and, and help you and help you to the point where you're headed. Um, along with that, just uh, as of two days ago, we submitted our first iTunes, or I'm sorry, iPhone application, uh, which, is, which should be pretty exciting. And we're also in the process of building a video game slash fitness uh, hybrid kind of combining World of Warcraft and uh, fitness tracking to create this kind of real-world RPG MMO um, game that is going to help people level up a character in a game by leveling themselves up in real life. So uh, as many products as I can handle at the moment uh, are currently launched, and, and I have, you know, juggling so much at the moment, but I'm so happy about it. It's, it's keeping me busy and excited and energized and motivated and uh, I know there's a real opportunity to create something pretty world-changing here, and I'm just excited to be a part of this community and, and kind of excited to see where it can go. Can you say to people that are a little bit overweight, not exercising? Foremost, they need to understand that diet is 80% of your success or failure, and most people don't want to hear that. They go to a gym or they go outside, they go for a mile run, and they burn 100 calories, and they come home and say, oh, man, I worked out today. I feel so good. And then they go eat... 800 calories worth of donuts and or drink a 400 calorie Gatorade or go to Starbucks and drink a 500 calorie uh, Frappuccino or something and they've completely undone everything that they did and more so I let people know that diet is 80% of your success or failure exercise is really just kind of the um, you know, that, that bonus at the end and if you're trying to lose weight put almost all of your focus on making better decisions with the types of foods and quality of food that you're putting in your mouth. If you can do that, your weight will start to drop. As far as exercise goes, the first thing I recommend to people is finding something that they actually enjoy. Personally, I hate running, so I don't do it. I love bodyweight exercises. I love uh, throwing frisbees around. I love hiking. I love going for long walks. I love things like gymnastics, parkour, whatever, but regular long distance running, I despise it. So I don't do it. If other people hate weight training and they love running, great, run, awesome. If they love to dance or if they love to hike or if they want to do live action role playing or playing uh, X Act or playing tennis with their, on, on the Wii, whatever, find something that they actually enjoy that gets their heart pumping and gets them off the couch and find a way to do that every day and I think, you know, for somebody that is brand new, those are the first two steps I would let people know. One, focus on what you're eating. Um, cut sugar? Sugar is, sugar, is <laughs> sugar is the reason our country is so overweight right now. And, uh, you know, sugar and high corn syrup, which is a sugar, you know, a replacement or fake, essentially fake. Um, cut sugar out and then find an exercise that makes you happy. And if you can combine those two things over a long enough period of time, slowly making small adjustments and building small habits along the way, your outer appearance will start to reflect that new you that is starting to exist on the inside as well. How about the paleo diet? How important is following a paleo diet? I'm a fan of it personally. 
Uh, I know it's not for everybody, and especially if somebody's brand new to fitness and health, and when I explain to them the concept of a paleo diet, it might kind of freak them out a little bit. But in my from from every angle and every bit of research that I've done, the paleo diet is absolutely the most optimal way optimal way for us to to eat. Essentially, the paleo diet is have eat like we were genetically designed to eat. We've existed as a species for depending on you know who you look, who you talk to or how far we go back. It could be hundreds of thousands of years, and we've only existed as a farming species after the agriculture revolution, uh, revolution uh, for about 10,000 years, which means our body developed to not eat foods that only became edible after the agriculture revolution, specifically grains, um, things like bread, rice, oats, uh, anything with gluten in it. Um, those types of foods wreak havoc on our systems, and some bodies are better than others. But I think recently, uh, most people could see there has been a rise in the number of people diagnosed with celiac disease, essentially people being gluten intolerant. I, for every person that has been diagnosed with gluten intolerance, there's got five, ten people that probably also have it, just don't realize it because that type of food has become so uh, <laughs> ingrained, sorry for the pun, <laughs> in, our, uh, in, in our daily lives. So I think if you can kind of shift your focus to eating things that only, only eating foods that existed way back in the day, you're going to be fine. Just uh, to keep it simple, meat, vegetables, fruit, nuts, eggs, and fish. That's it. Cut out, cut, cut out grains, cut out refined carbs and sugar, and put your focus on eating those four or five basic things. Mix them up in any way you want. Don't worry about counting calories, uh, but just try to avoid those other foods. And you'll not only lose weight, but you'll also start to feel a lot better. You mentioned Adam Baker and how to not make your blogging suck. Could you give some yep. advice on, on, on how to bloggers not suck so much? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, first and foremost, if you're going to join a crowded niche or a crowded industry, you have to be unique. I can't tell you how many, you know, if you're if you're running a travel blog, you have to be different than the other millions of travel blogs out there. If you're going to be a fitness blog, you have to be different than the other fitness blogs or or personal finance. I jumped into a crowd. She's probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of fitness blogs out there, and managed to kind of create my own little niche because I did things completely differently than anything else out there. You know, I, I don't think other sites exist that want to combine Star Wars and deadlifts or Lord of the Rings and, and dieting or uh, the hop. You know? There are very few places out there that do that. And I, I wanted to cater specifically to those groups of people. So if you're going to enter a crowd, you have to be different uh, and be okay with doing things kind of the opposite way of everybody else. If you look at any other fitness website, they generally tend to write articles that are 500 words full of top 10 lists and bullet points made for quick consumption so that people can move on. Uh, I took nine months and I got nowhere with it. It wasn't until I completely shifted and said, I'm going to write really long articles that are probably going to piss a lot of people off that don't feel like reading. And almost overnight, Nerd Fitness skyrocketed in popularity because the people that did manage to read all the way to the bottom became so invested and excited that they could get all of their information in a single article and not have to go anywhere else that they became tremendous nerd fitness fans almost immediately. Um, so I think that's first and foremost, if you're going to enter a crowded niche, be unique. Next, put all of your focus on being helpful. I don't think enough people do that. I think they kind of worry about, okay, how am I going to make money with this or uh, I'm going to make this all about me and my, if it's a travel site, I can't tell you how many travel sites I just read about people and this is how I'm, this is what I'm doing and why I did this and who I am and where this is going and why I'm doing this tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. When, if you're trying to turn a website into a business, you have to make it about the reader. You have to, when somebody shows up to your site, their first thought is, how is this going to make my life better? Is it going to make, is it going to entertain me? Is it going to solve one of my problems? Is it going to make my life better in some way? And if it doesn't, it's just kind of, Oh, that's kind of cool. Like, look at him. He travels. That's awesome. Like, they'll read it and then they'll move on. Or they might stick around, but they're probably never going to buy anything from you. But if you can solve a problem that they have and really get to the root of what they're struggling with and provide a solution to them, they're going to be your fan for life. And 
and encourage their friends and family to find you. They will become your ambassadors and your marketers and your salespeople because they just love what you're doing. So put all of your focus on helping people. And if you have just ask them what they're struggling with and then spend your time writing articles and crafting products and stories and services that specifically address those needs and, um, and, and then just continually ask them. Ask them, did this work? Did it, if it didn't work, how else can I help? What else are you struggling with? Where else can I be uh, of, of, of assistance to you? They're already providing you with their most, most valuable resource, and that's their attention. Um, and I think that kind of gets taken for granted a lot. So if you have somebody's attention, do everything you can to keep it and do everything you can to help them out in a unique way and you can start to build a business around it that way. Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking this time to answer all these questions. It was great hearing about your story. And I hope we can talk again soon. Dude, I love you. And yeah, thanks so much for having me.